a little red dot swimming in a sea of stars. Got the whole damn verse spinning around you with open arms. It's a race against time that plunges you deep into the flag. What are you gonna do when the void stares back? You'll never stop the revolution. Time to begin your evolution. Take a leap of faith. the illusion you gotta make your own solution take a leap of faith the future's just a void jump away greetings greetings humanity and uh, welcome once more uh, to channel other doc i am jim i use he him pronouns and uh believe it or not this is our dark matter campaign ghosts of salt Ma. um it's 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 actually happening i i'm not sure I, i'm not sure how it's actually happening but uh, it appears as though it is in fact happening um so uh, as 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 it looks as though our technical hurdle has been le has been leapt leaped jumped over um and uh, so we are going to proceed and finally hopefully find out what is happening um but as we as we do that thing um let us uh, let us go around and say hi to everybody i'm uh, i'm playing cole hayden human gunslinger and uh, now let us uh go over to anino hello how's it going everyone my name is anino i use he him pronouns and today I get to play uh, Rekmara, the um, jaded of your rod druid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's so much jadedness right now. <laughs> so much. But let's continue on uh, to Kazimi. Hello. Hi, I'm Kazimi. Oops. Um, and I'm playing Clangswell Nunu Fritz Holds Bottom Thunderstruck, the space gnome, uh, who uses they, them pronouns. Awesome, awesome. And now over to May. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is May. I am playing Lassness Chain Tower, the star dwarf paladin. We both use she, her pronouns. Excellent. And now down to Mem. Hello. Hello, I'm Mem. I will be Narita Galeen and Natalie Witch, and we both use she, her pronouns. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And finally, we shall hand things over to our illustrious station master, Alyssa. Hello. And welcome back for the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I can hear her. There's something wrong. <laughs> I know. How is this possible? <laughs> The internet demons have been assuaged. <laughs> Finally. I'm not going to tell you what it took to make that happen, but <laughs> my name is Alyssa, and I play everybody else. So, with most games on this channel, we will be using safety tools such as the X card, the N card, and the O card. So if at any point we're uh, crossing a line for somebody and we don't want to have that kind of subject in the game, they can type an X in the Zoom chat, make an X symbol, and we will stop, rewind at a dash of retcom, and it never happened. If we're kind of towing that line and it's okay to have it in the game, but we don't want a graphic description, that's where the end comes into play, we will pan to a fake fireplace fade to black and move on and if things are getting intense and there's a lot of dramatic role play happening and you need to check in and let everybody know you're okay to keep 
piling on the drama. That's where the O comes into play. Feel free to use the O proactively. And if things start to look intense, um, we can also type an O with a question mark just to check in. And then everybody can respond uh, accordingly as needed. Also, if you're freaking out in the moment and you, you just need to say, Alyssa, please, no more spiders, feel free. <laughs> Is this a hint? Spiders? Are they coming back? <laughs> Who knows? You know. We'll find out. <laughs> so previously, on Ghosts of Salt Mall, with the party having convinced Lesnus not to try any fancy flying during their descent toward the planet Lixay, the Space Ghost landed safely at Fort Brackish Spaceport. And from there, Fritz headed off to secure some ground transportation while Cole and the rest of the party made their way to the bad side of town, a rundown part of the harbor known as the Sties, to see if they could get a lead on where to find a hanging tree. Luckily, the residents were in a festive mood thanks to a bountiful catch, and Cole was able to make nice with a bartender named Burke at the Hungry Net, who told him about a mutineer who was rumored to have been hanged in the drowned forest. While Cole finished his ale, Narita joined him at the bar and chatted up Burke, who mentioned that some ships had recently been lost at sea and some people were saying that a siren was responsible. Narita took the mention of a siren as an opportunity to prod Cole about his relationship with Sergeant Watson, but Cole became quite intent on studying something at the bottom of his glass and refused to answer one way or the other. It was about that time that Fritz arrived with their wheels and the group headed out of town, cruising through the suburbs past the billboards for Tropic Crash, Powerful Thighs, and its Orca Cola counterpart, Gun Kissed. And they turned off the main road before reaching the next town, parked the vehicle near the border of Hool Marsh and the Drowned Forest and headed in on foot. Rek Marat was able to guide the party around a patch of shrieking fungus without alarming the plants or drawing any unwelcome attention from uh, marsh creatures and eventually they picked up a trail of humanoid footprints and blaster scorched remains half buried in the muck which led them to the epicenter of the dead and rotting woods there in the heart of the drowned forest stood a large misshapen vine choked tree with thick black ichor seeping from its gnarled bark and a desiccated humanoid husk suspended from its branches. Reflexively, Rekmara blasted the branch off the tree and the hanged man began shambling towards the party. We rejoin our adventurers as five more husks lured by the sound of blaster fire come lurching out of the woods, pursued by a pair of squat, hungry looking creatures, each with fiendish red eyes, stumpy legs, and four twisted arms with claw-like hands protruding from either side of their enormous toothy maws. And we're gonna roll for initiative. I'm so glad I know what it is now. <laughs> kind of like when I didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a relief. I, 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 didn't e I, I didn't even know there was more than one thing. Yeah. Thing, yeah. <laughs> I, guess that was, I guess that was lost in the translation. Look what you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's taken us how many weeks to get ready to yell at Rek Marat for that one? <laughs> Rek Marat cares not for your uh, anything. Your lives, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're all pawns on my board of checkers. Was it you who said something about respecting the plants? <laughs> and then you go and shoot it. <laughs> Now's not the time to talk about shooting plants. We gotta shoot those things. <laughs> right. I think I have... Wait, I should finish rolling, shouldn't I? I have advantage 19. on initiative. I forgot. I can roll another die. 17. Oh, that's much better. 20. <laughs> that is much better. 16. It's been so long, I've forgotten how to play. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just play D and D like Monday? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. 
<laughs> that game, yes, but in that game, I am, I am playing a wizard who, who, has, who has no idea how to use a gun. <laughs> Alright, so I heard a 20, uh, a 17, a 16. 19. Okay. And a 10. 10. Narita. What's oh, your number? I, I, 17, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> what? Mem gets to act, like, in the top two, three? <laughs> This never happens. <laughs> this never happens. Usually I'm just like, I'm over here, I got a dagger, I'm the first one I miss, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next round, flee. <laughs> it's her secret move, okay? <laughs> In a fighting game, it would just be back, 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 back. Keep in mind, I already did it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, lucky for all of you, the uh, the zombies rolled real low. So who's cool up first? Okay. Um, this was refamiliarizing myself with the things that the gunslinger does, um, and uh, so I'm going to. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to draw and shoot at the thing. Um, okay. as, uh, uh, as and it, and just mm -hmm. before we get uh, deep into combat, for for um, those of you who have uh, done combat in space, Cole, I'm guessing probably you have at some point. Yeah. Um, you would know that uh, a husk is um, you, what sometimes becomes of a, a corpse that has been exposed to the vacuum of space. Oh, okay. Um, they, they get their soul ripped out and a piece of the void possesses the body Ooh. and it becomes undead. That sounds awesome. That's definitely how I want to go. Um, Rock Mara's making all your dreams come true. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, so shoot, shoot the thing. I'm gonna shoot the thing. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. All right, here we go. I'm gonna shoot the thing. Okay, so that's ve that's very cool. Um, I have uh, I have rolled a natural twenty. Um, All right, excellent. What, what are you shooting with, by the way? I'm shooting with I'm shooting with a blaster, just my uh, my uh, my uh, repeater. Um, and uh, so it's a radiant radiant blaster damage. I am going okay. to overcharge uh, okay. on that so that I can uh, so that I can get an ad an additional die of damage. Um, and I forget what happens on crits. <laughs> All dice roll twice and then add your modifier. Gotcha. Because I have not critted in that other game yet. <laughs> I actually haven't have made an attack roll against anything in that other game, I don't think yet. But, you know, things are happening. Anyway, enough of that. This is now. Okay, so I'm just going to roll a bunch of dice and then add them up. Okay, so after rolling twice, 10, 14, uh, 18, 20, 23 plus modifiers of any kind, which... Uh, the blaster does not have. Um, <laughs> it's a 23. All right. Um, also, well, hang on. Let me wait. Sorry. Hold uh, on. Wait. I'm, I apologize. I have to yeah, roll two more should, dice. You should probably be adding something. Because I got because like, cr I critted. And I for <laughs> hold on. It's not 23. It's it's in fact 29. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Um, so. <laughs> Please describe for us and the audience how you disintegrate this undead husk. 
So it just basically, the thing immediately is, as soon as it hits the ground, and the second it stands up, it is with him just like, wait, what? <laughs> Can I just reflexively draw and, uh, and you know, s squeeze off a round or two at it? Um, yes. And uh, just, just happen to get it dead center. Um, as as the, uh, the the bolts blast through it and uh, and uh, effectively uh, uh, put it down. I don't know what they look like when they die. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm 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 kind of thinking because you overcharge this blaster. Uh, there's a big hole, and the radiance just sort of burns its way out from from the the center, and nice. it just sort of becomes dust. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Uh, so, so that's why they wanted the branch. Okay. Oh, hell, there are more. <laughs> so now, Cole, you took care of the one that came down from the tree, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we just have five behind us and two things with multiple arms? Yes. Um, they're okay. sort of coming out of, of various yeah. parts of the wood. Places. Um, so I think Fritz, you're up next. Oh, okay. Um, Less cool. You would mentioned like to move. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm just basically I'm I'm just basically turning to face the uh, outward so that I can uh, see the things coming. All right. Um, yeah. Are there any of these that are closer together? Um. Yeah, there, there. Uh, there's probably a few of them that are. I'm, tr I'm trying to see if there's any number. Uh, if, if there are two or more that are in within a ten foot radius, uh, ten foot, yeah, radius of each other, uh, within ten feet of each other. Yeah. Uh, if any of them are not social distancing. Yeah, there's about three of them. Okay, let's go for that cluster. Um, and nobody here has seen the little project that Fritz has been working on for months at this point. Um, but all of a sudden you see Fritz have glowing gloves, gauntlets, and just as sort of this weird thing and phew, giant lightning ball uh, heads out and um, I'm going to target the center of the creatures. Uh, and then the, if I hit, then there's a deck save on the others within 10 feet. Okay. And I roll a 14. That is a hit. Okay. Uh, so it's, do, 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 sorry, uh, 2d6 lightning damage. And what's that uh, dex save the others? Yeah. To make? Uh, say, it just says save DC. Or take lightning damage equal to half the damage rolled. Um, Just six and five. Ooh, I rolled an 11 damage. All right. Okay, so two of them fail. The other two that are next to it. So my main target made the roll, but the other two didn't. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. So they take half the damage. Are you rounding up? Because then it would be six. Yeah. So six six points apiece for those two. All righty. Anything else you'd like to do? Just try to have a tall person at my back. Okay. Narita's up next. Um, I'm actually not sure where I am in relation to everyone else. Where so would did, you like to be? Did the I would assume that she would run back the way they came, which has mm. already been tread over and is relatively safe. So does that put her closer to Didn't didn't Narita like do that yeah, she did run away the thing last time? Yeah. As soon as the thing came down. Which might um, be closer to the rest of them. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Let's okay. see. Yeah. Yeah. 
You are... You are probably a little bit closer to the the cluster of three that Fritz just zapped. But Am I within 15 feet of them? Do you want to be? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Okay. Someone save me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are going to try Thunderwave. Okay. Uh, and it is a constitution save? Constitution save. What's your DC? Uh, 12. All right, we've got two fails, one save. Okay, so it's half damage on save mm-hmm. and not pushed, whereas the other two will take 2d8 thunder damage and are pushed 10 feet away. Okay, that's not horrible. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was a one. Um, eight damage. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to do? Move closer to the group. Okay. Lesnus. <laughs> the Which one's just the... about ran into the arms of these extra zombies. Well, Cole has obliterated the first one. What do you want to do? Which enemy is the biggest one left? Um. There's, they're all like roughly human sized. Um, there are um, a couple that haven't taken any damage yet, so they're looking a, a little bit in better shape. And then those two, um, mouthy creatures. Um, they're mouthy or army? Both. Oh, they, excellent. They're, they're, you know, um, in Full Metal Alchemist, when uh, Gluttony opens up the big mouth in the chest and it's all just like teeth? It's like that, but with extra arms and no actual, like, human head. I, I, that's not my uh, fanship, um, but... You explained that so well, I totally have an image of it, and I'm going for it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to race towards it and summon my um, my hammer to my hands. And I'm going to go for the one on the left. All right. Whatever. Left made out of space, for God's sake. Um, that's a 13. That's, uh, let me see. Let me make sure I'm, yeah, that's a hit. Yay. Sure I'm looking at the right stab block here. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to activate the 1d4 part of the damage, as well as the 1d10. Okay. Um, don't step in. You can step in in a second. And I got 10 points of damage. Alrighty. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, and I turn to the other one and says, Come here, gorgeous. It's your turn to dance, too. All right. Rick Mara, you're up next. 
uh, Rekmara is going to um, point at Lasnus and just say, let me compensate for your many shortcomings. And he's going to cast his uh, evolutionary dice and um, increase her strength. Cool. I wish I'd let you go before me. It's uh, so her, her, I just rolled a four. So her, her strength for the purpose of this battle is now plus four. And uh, for Rekmara's next trick, he is going to cast a level two spell. Uh, he's going to cast Bark Skin on himself. All right. Bumps his uh, armor class to 16. Nice. So suddenly the Birdman has uh, a tree bark armor. And now... Majestically carved. Majestically. <laughs> what, what does this majestic bark armor look like? Well, it's just... It looks like his feathers. It's just majestically <laughs> carved. Oh. Excellent. You know, like those sculptures, if you go to like a state park and there's like someone who's carved out as a wood, a big wood statue of like someone or something, I think that must be what it looks like. I think it's shiny, like iridescent. Really polished. I, I was imagining super polished. Yep, yep. And the feathering, oh my God, it was going to be beautiful. It's beautiful in my mind. All right. Well, it's a good thing you cast that uh, bark skin on yourself because one of the husks is going to make a lunge at you. It's going to try. That's a two. Muted. I know. Slid right off. I was just going to let it go. <laughs> it swings at you with both fists and misses both times. Oh, gets two attacks? Yep. One cooth. Mm -hmm. The scrappy. So that's one. And. One of them is going after Narita, and it rolls a total of 20 to hit for the first one, and then it misses with the second one. Oh. Uh. Uh. So that is eight points of bludgeoning damage. Is it just bashes its fist into your aqua suit? Rita takes the hit and then side eyes Rek Mara. Another one is going to go after Fritz with the big lightning gloves. Yep. Miss. And the nat one. It, it punches itself. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. Another one goes after Fritz. 14 on the first swing. And a nine on the second. Do either of those hit? Uh, oh, AC of 14. So I, forget, Ty, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, Ty, Ty goes to the uh, yeah. hitter, right? Yep, meets it, beats it. 
Yeah. Um, you only take three points of bludgeoning damage. All right. Fourth one goes after Lasnus. Taking her up on that invitation to dance, but that is uh, only a 12. Uh, second swing is a uh, 23 total. So you will take eight points of bludgeoning damage from its second punch. Okay. All right. And finally, the last one goes after Lasnus as well. That's a one, two misses. She may not always have grace, but she can dance. You managed to evade that one. And the, um, as for the, uh, mouth demons, they seem more intent on going after the husks than after these, um, living, fighty creatures. Hmm. Huh. Okay with that. So the uh, one that uh, Lasnus hit uh, turns and just like takes a bite out of the, the husk that was attacking her. And the other one goes after the next closest one. Uh, but it can't quite get a hold of it because it's kind of slipping around in the muck. So that brings us back to the top of the round with Cole. Okay, um, so we have, who's closest right now, or uh, which, which enemies, enemy targets are closest at the moment? Um, probably the, the three husks that, um, Fritz shot with the lightning. Okay, I'm gonna, um... Since I, I can't use the uh, the repeater, I'm going to switch to the plasma launcher. Um, favorite thing, uh, and, and I'm going to a aim at the one in the middle, um, okay. because <laughs> it's, there's this delightful five foot radius thing that happens. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me go ahead then, and actually, I, I should probably. Why did you not pull up the rules for that yet, Jim? I don't know. Um, but, uh, that's, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna aim for the one in the middle. Uh, just kind of, uh, quickly just sort of, whilst, uh, sort of diving in the direction of, uh, probably the tree is the only thing that is, uh, right, right around here that involves cover. Um, okay. but I want to make sure that I'm, you know, not, unless I'm in front of somebody squishier than myself, in which case I will not do that. Um... But if I'm not blocking them, then I'm gonna. If someone squishier, then I will. I will move over. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. As we as we bring forth the plasma weapon, um, fire blaster, explosive heat. There we go. Uh, I was I'm just looking for that for that explosive quality. So that I have the uh, the rules for it, but we shall uh, 
We shall dive into that in a moment. Um, first, I shall roll a thing, which will probably be the thing whereby I attempt to hit the thing. That, that sounds like, that sounds reasonable. Okay. I have stalled long enough. I will roll a die now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's going to be... Um, it's going to be 15. 15 will hit. Yeah. Um, okay. Is that, uh, <laughs> is that within... Uh, is, is that uh, f uh, 5 greater than its uh, AC? Yeah, it's only 2 higher. Oh, it's only 2. Okay, no worries. Yeah, their AC is 13. All right, um, so I'm I am gonna go ahead and overcharge it anyway okay. because I can I can I can do this all day, um, <laughs> and uh, so so that I will get that third die and I shall ah okay so that is nine damage of the explosive the explosive fire heat damage um, and let's see just in case explosive. Is when it, when it hits a target, it explodes in a five foot radius. Um, each creature other than the target within the blast radius must succeed on a DC 14 dexterity saving throw, taking half the damage rolled on a failed save or no damage with it on a successful one. So if anyone is so if if either of the other two are still right next to it, then possibly they might get hurt too. Get a 17 and an 18. Okay, yeah, that 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 saves. So they take uh, so. Uh, they would take no damage on that one. Yeah, we're good. Okay. How much did the first one take? First one takes nine. Okay. Um, you uh, you blast a, a and burn a, a big chunk of this creature's body off. It's missing a limb, but it still manages to stay standing. <laughs> Tough bastards. <laughs> Prepare to switch to the gun again. <laughs> Okay. And then you said you're diving towards the tree? Yes. As you dive towards the tree for cover, the vines that are Oops. climbing the tree animate and lash out toward you. Go! Oh. <laughs> Terrible hubris. 13 to hit. Uh, that just misses. Okay. So you are in motion, and it misjudges by that much. So if that's the case, I'm just going to keep going for a moment. Like, ah! Just roll over the hill. Roll and, yeah, just roll and stand up uh, uh, a bit away from it. You're like, oh, no, you don't. Somebody forgot to keep their hand up. <laughs> or yeah. maybe he did just have his yeah, hand up. I was up. like, ah! I'm ready to switch. <laughs> All right, Fritz, cool. Uh, blasts three of the husks with plasma fire and then dives for cover and nearly gets entangled in the vines. You're up. All right, so. The three that I was aiming at before are all still functional? Yes. One of them's looking really rough, but they're all still kicking. I'm going to shoot essentially the same thing. Is the one who's looking rough one of the ones that was on the edge, not the one that I was primarily aiming at last time? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to continue to aim at the one I hit last time and hope I can still catch the other two in the in the same blast radius. Last of my blast points. Or last of my extra fancy points here. So, uh, 14. 14 hits. All right. And that's seven points of damage to the main one which would be four to the other two, each of the other two.
All right. Uh, well, one of them goes down. Two are still up. All right. Which one went down? The one that, um, the one that Cole blasted the arm off. Okay. So I kind of finished that one off, you but then there's that the... one off. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Pick it, Got picking it. away at the other two, that they probably don't have much left in them. Uh, Narita. Um, where is the nearest thing to me? Um, probably those, uh, the two that were, that are left of the group of three. Because one of them was trying to chase you. All right. Um, what do I want to do? I'm probably too close to shoot, so we will just do. Yeah, we'll do Thunder Wave again. Okay. One fails, one makes it. And it is 10 damage. They both die. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> one gets blown backwards, and the other stays like trying to push forward and still gets disintegrated. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, Lasnus, you're up. Um, when the are there any husks left? There are two husks left and two maw demons. But the demon things seem to be going after the husks. Yes. Um, then the one that was hurting Narita is that one still alive? Um, nope. Those are, those have all gone down now. So you've got um, one that is right next to you that the Maw Demon is ch chowing down on, and then uh, another one that hasn't taken any damage yet, but it's right next to the second Maw Demon. Um, okay. Um, I guess I'll... Enemy of my enemy is my friend, so I think I'll swing at the husk that's being attacked by the Maw Demon. Okay. Okay. 17. Hits. Okay, and I want to use my rocket hammer to do the extra d4 of damage. It says once around, so. Okay. Go for it. I get your increased damage too from the strength. Thank you, yes. That gets me to 13 points of damage. You kill the husk, and as it drops, the maw demon shoves it into its mouth, and you can see a swirling portal to who knows where, and the corpse disappears through it. So I just glimpsed the abyss? Maybe. Oh, man. Do I need to roll a sanity check? <laughs> How do you feel? I feel good. Good. I think it looked enough like the picture in the Star Scouts manual that she was totally prepared for this. <laughs> totally prepared. If you ever look into the abyss, say hi. <laughs> Remember, kids, the abyss is for everyone, so make <laughs> sure you keep the edge of it clean. <laughs> So that others can enjoy staring into infinity. <laughs> All right, Rick Mariah, you're up next. Yay. Um, <laughs> is, uh, is there still a husk that uh, is in melee range of me? Um, there is, uh, there's one left. And you could get within melee range of it if you want to be. Oh, no, no, I don't want to be at all. I, no. 
was just concerned about the one that was no um, no all of the, the yeah. first the first four of them have gone down and so has the farthest one so you just got like one left Yeah, Rick Morale looks kind of bored, and he's just going to, uh... <laughs> Probably shoot the tree again, and we'll all be in more trouble, right? You know what? Just for that... Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> just for that... Um... Oh, wait. Were we able to recover the branch? Um, Not yet. No one has tried yet. I, I think that's uh, what Cole was setting himself up for, actually. Maybe. Before the well, branch I mean, tried to grab ground. him, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, the the branch is on the ground. I I blasted one off. So. Yes, yeah. the branch. There's a branch on the ground. There are vines on the tree that are trying to grab coal. Oh, um, uh, Rick Mara is just going to nonchalantly uh, walk over to the branch and pick it up. <laughs> okay. Ding. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> The, the vines, as you walk over to the tree and pick up the branch, the vines lash out and try to attack you. And that... is going to be... Twenty-two to hit you. Yeah, that hits. You are and not you being a gracious co-host. We'll take. <laughs> you will take eleven points of bludgeoning damage, and you are now grappled. Oh. That's not great. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing I can't cast a spell now. Hey, Rek Mara, you might want to yell no traps next time. <laughs> uh, you can't move. Um, you can still... Um, you can still cast spells and make attacks, but um, your attack rolls will be at disadvantage, and things trying to attack you will have advantage. Did uh, did picking up the branch uh, use my action for the round? No. Okay. You can interact in response, with the for free. Okay. It, it, in, in an irked manner, uh, Rekmara is just going to stare at the tree, and uh, it's going to cast Flaming Spear on it, centered on it. On the tree? Yes. Okay. So is that an attack roll, or does it make a save? Uh, it's got a save versus dex. Okay. Um, it doesn't move, so it's going to automatically fail that dex save. Okay. So it will take whatever damage you dole out. How big is the tree, by the way? Um... Big. Okay, the, the sphere is five feet in diameter. I just want to make sure that it's not touching any of um my friends. No, you can. You can. Sorry, friends is a strong it, word. It, it, <laughs> meant, uh, party members. Your business is party. Hesitation there. <laughs> I I thought he was talking about other trees. <laughs> Uh, it, it will not hit any other trees, and it will not hit coal. Okay. So we'll just, we'll, we'll leave that sphere there. Okay. 
It's really bright, though. How much damage does it do? It does 2d6 at the end of the turn. Okay. That's... So nothing yet. That is so cruel. And awesome. Nat nature is cruel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Um, Maybe we could have asked the tree for the branch. <laughs> if you want to have a conversation with a tree that's oozing black ichor, go for it. Not anymore. Well, Asmus is still kind of offended by the idea of sentient trees for some reason. <laughs> um, so the uh, final uh, husk is going to uh, it's going to chase after Rek Mara. Uh, um, and the Ma Demon tries to take a, a, a chomp out of it, but misses. The husk, however, rolls a 21 and a 23 to hit Rek Mara. Ow. Uh, so you will take ten points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Ironically here, or unironically, given the competency of his party, Rekmara is the only one who can save himself. Hey, yes, hey. you shot the tree! <laughs> you did this to yourself. <laughs> but also, if you just cross over to the brink of death, I can put a hand on you and keep you there. <laughs> Could you cackle? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that. You know, I could drop him to zero hit points, and then I could hold him in stasis. That yeah, exactly. I could do the same thing. We just, you know, stabilize you, and have to leave the planet immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Define me. Rek Maras to pre prevent him from causing any further trouble. <laughs> Is that what's happening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Well, I'll give him this. He didn't actually hit any of us this time, so this I've time. never hit any of you intentionally. Um, not, not for lack of trying. <laughs> No, no, no. You're yeah. thinking of coal in his plasma launcher. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everything I hit, everything I do is targeted very <laughs> cleanly, mind you. So clean. So clean. So clean. <laughs> Crisp. <laughs> Just wrapped up. <laughs> Wait, what is... No, so in the meantime, the two maw demons go after the one remaining husk, and one of them is just struggling. It's struggling so hard. And <laughs> the other the the other one c consistently seems to be able to bite things. Um, so Does anyone want to adopt an inept maw demon? We seem to be creating the menagerie. <laughs> the spaceship of misfit archetypes. Wait, let me think about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, so asking. It, it takes, a, it takes a, a chunk of 10 hit points out of the remaining husk. And coal. Oh, wait, um, I, I deal my damage to the, uh... Yes. Rek Marad, roll me some damage. Two, four, six. You notice the uh, vines in the tree take a little bit of damage as well. And coal. 
Round so, three. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, um, there are... Uh, so, it looks like the uh, our enemies are currently fighting each other, so that will help. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is it appears as though these vines that just tried to kill me are now trying to kill Rek Mara. Um, yes. Is I'm going to come around and uh, bring out my uh, my dagger, my antimatter dagger, uh -huh. and try to cut the vines. Okay. By the way, I probably should have asked, are the vines or any part of this tree combustible? That's a good question. Because, because if they are, they are, they are on fire. You know? Okay, so the tree is definitely on fire. Because it looks like it's mostly dead, but for some reason it's bleeding black. Yeah, yeah. So but um, the vines are a little more green, so they haven't caught yeah. yet. So with the tree to light my way merrily blazing away, um, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll come around trying to give it a wide enough berth. Uh, and, uh, just come out with a dagger and just like, ah, oh, Jesus. And, um, try, try to cut the vines to, uh, to, to let Rick Marar out. Okay. Make an attack roll. Okay. Oh, this will be fun. Um, so this is, this is the thing that I'm, that I'm supposed to fumble and plunge my dagger right into Rick Marar's shoulder blades. Is that how that works? Um, yeah. okay. All right. Just checking. I'm going to roll a die now. Um... Okay, there it is. I understand now. That's fascinating. So I rolled another okay. natural 20. Oh, wow. another critical success. Um, unfortunately, I can't do any of my, 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 my tricks to it, I don't think. Um, but uh, because I'm not using a firearm. Uh, but... Uh, cool, yeah. Hayden. A nice, slinger. <laughs> nice slinger. Nice <laughs> slinger. Nice slinger. But uh, I was just looking over my, looking over the things I can do just in case I can bend the definition. But hold no. a knife like this, it cuts through an onion. Hold a knife like this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ginsu. <laughs> All right. So double dice plus plus mod modifier thingy. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. I'm learning. Uh, so that is a total. It's a dagger. Uh, so that's a total of nine piercing damage. Necrotic finesse light piercing damage. <laughs> okay. It will take nine points of damage. You cut through some of the vines. I'm just like. <laughs> Just like, geez, there's so many. And, and it's like it had to throw all of its vines on you at once or something. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly <laughs> hacking away. <laughs> Watch your fingers, Cole. He's going to blast again. I got it. <laughs> and you notice that as you are, are cutting through these vines, it appears to only be able to constrict one target at a time. It's not That's able good to news. grab for you. <laughs> Fritz. Yes. You're up. Uh, so between the fact that the tentacles can only hold one target, they are holding one target and Cole is sitting there busily sawing away at them as well. Um, Fritz casually saunters up and grabs onto a tentacle <coughs> holding onto Rek Mara and gives it a good zap with the gauntlets. Okay. Do mm -hmm. I even have to roll it to hit since I'm actually holding it? Um, you still have to roll to in order to grab it. Okay. Because it might slither out of the way. It might slither out of the way. I mean, I could just grab Rek Mara and get it that way, but I'll do that next turn if I don't hit this time. Okay. 14, uh, 15. That'll hit. All right. And 2d6. Five points. And I'll hang on. Okay. Good to know. Narita. Is this branch still 
attached. Rekmaraz got the branch that he shot out of the tree, and he's now grabbed around the middle by the vine. Holding the branch. Holding. Well, holding the branch. Mm. Are there Should any I branches? Just strangle him. Are there any branches that are like within arm's reach, and then arm's reach for Narita being like nine to ten feet? <laughs> Yes, there are also some branches that are on fire. <laughs> I love how uh, Rekmora fixes things. The tree. The tree. The tree um, is on fire. <laughs> what's, what's the best way to do this? Um, so, wait. Am I impervious to fire damage? Yes, I am. All right. So, what am I going to do? <laughs> okay. What are you going to do? <laughs> Just make sure before I decide to do this. Um, going to try to just break off a branch that is on fire. Okay. It's on fire. Make a strength roll. She's so strong. <laughs> Wait. Is this with just a d20? What do I roll? Roll the d20, and if you have a strength bonus... I do. Add that. Who? So with the two, it's 18. Ooh. Excellent. You are able to snap off a burning branch, and you could smother the branch in the boggy, mucky ground if you would like to put it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no I just want to point out, I just want to point out that the branch that I did grab, someone was actually hanging from it. So, you know, I feel like it's the more valuable branch. That's right. That was the whole point, wasn't it? Yep. A tree from a branch from a tree used to hang a murderer. Mm. Technically, doesn't have to be the branch where the person was hanging. Well, that's the question because the way that that's phrased, used well, to hang a murder murderer could could be modifying either the uh, the subject the branch or the. Or the... Yeah. <laughs> this is just in case you don't make it. The tree takes back its branch. Just prepared I mean, for all eventualities. <laughs> Just this, uh, this tree is going to be a pile of ashes regardless of what happens. <laughs> the question is, are you going to be with that pile or not? So we're just gonna I'm gonna take this person I got. We're gonna go away. But we'll try to save you too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Uh, the vine can't can't really do anything else except keep grappling Rick Mara. So lastness. So um, I'm gonna go and I want to use my rocket hammer on a part of the tree that's holding down Rick Mara that's not close enough to be hurt by Jim. Can I do that? Cold, cold, cold. Yes. Okay. Um, my table has been co-opted. Um. <laughs> Just roll on Nora. Thirteen. Uh, you swing, but your hammer glances off the the sticky bark. It's totally not because I was short and I couldn't get good footing. Hey, it... I'm sorry. So doesn't uh, add four? Which uh, oh, right. What was your two hit? Yes. Your strength is a two you hit. Have, you're, you're a little stronger right. now. I'm stronger than yesterday. Um, so thirteen plus four <laughs> is seventeen, which it will is. hit. Hooray! So roll some damage on the against this nasty Oops, evil sorry, no. cursed tree. Nasty evil cursed tree. <laughs> Um, 12. Okay. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, no, but thank you. Okay. Rick Mara, at the start of your turn,
We're going to take... 18 points of poison damage. Poison? Okay. Yeah. From the so, uh, Rekmara is now unconscious. Okay. Should have left that branch. Jeez. Not you, me. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe also you. <laughs> Uh... Wait, does my sphere actually need a uh, concentration? Ooh, I think it might. Yeah, it does. Oh, there goes my flaming sphere. Right, Rekamara falls unconscious, drops the branch, and the flames in the tree go out. They do? I thought they would have stayed on fire. Well... The, the sphere goes out. Some of the branches are still burning. Um, but the majority of this, the flaming sphere, the flaming sphere itself goes out. Um, it, it's still on fire, so it, it will continue to burn. But, um, but it's not taking as much damage as it, it otherwise was. And... The uh, remaining husk will attempt to attack Narita. Didn't even know there are any still left. This is going so well. Then a 15. Wait, what was the first one? 18. Well, boy, we're just getting hit all over the place, aren't we? <laughs> Narita's gonna be unconscious too in a second watch. <laughs> So that's going to be 10 bludgeoning damage. Hey. How you doing? Hanging on by a thread. <laughs> All right. And then the maw demons will continue attacking the husk. What do you know? The struggler manages to make a hit. takes six points of piercing damage out of the husk. And the first one that was hitting it doesn't manage to uh, doesn't manage to get a bite this time. And as before Cole manages to take his next turn, mm -hmm. <laughs> some blaster fire comes out of the uh, trees. Oh no. Oh no, the trees have guns! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone take cover! <sighs> Not only do they have grasping vines, but they have firearms as well. <laughs> the cursed trees can't trust them. You were you were right, Lasness. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> yeah, I will, uh, I will argue. <laughs> Uh, it hits the vine that is currently grappling Rick Morrell. Oh, it didn't let go even after I died? No. You didn't still, die. You're unconscious. Still holding you. You're unconscious. You're not dead okay. yet. Yeah, you didn't Aerith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like Cole hit you. Yeah, I mean, you know, then you'd, then you'd most definitely be dead. It uh, it depends on whether or not they get you out of this uh, grapple. And I, well, I don't know. Maybe they want, maybe Mem will want to pick some flowers next round or something. Oh! <laughs> and I had known your life um, was in the so, balance. I would have stabbed the tree. <laughs> so the uh, the assassin vine takes seven points of radiant damage from the blaster fire from out of the trees. Oh, it's not aimed at us. That's great. That's no, good. It's not. Or maybe it was, and it was just a bad shot. Oh, true. We don't know how well trees can shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they could be really bad shots. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, hey, how's it going? Um, <laughs> I, I kind of... So I'm going to uh, hop around to the other side of Rick Marah from wherever the blaster fire is coming. Yeah. Um... So and, using Rekmarai as a shield. Uh, against the blaster fire for a moment, yes. I feel as though... Who, I, I mean, Cole is willing to guess that, that whoever is shooting is, does, does not mean him harm. So he does not wish to... Uh, but he does not wish to present a potential target if, oh. the, uh, if the next shot is Basically missed. He's unconscious Birdman as a meat shield. So yes, yes, that too. <laughs> um, but uh, then uh, I will continue cutting. Okay. <laughs> You can either continue cutting through mm -hmm. these vines, or you could try to uh, break its hold from around him. Hmm. That would that sounds like a thing that would require strength. Yes. That's that's or, hilarious. Or dexterity. I will let you uh. use dexterity. <laughs> oh wait, wait, dexterity. That's a yes. that's if an entirely would, different ballgame. How how are you at untying knots? Uh, a little bit better than I am at forcing them open. I'll put it that way. Um, I don't have. Uh, I don't have. Not, I, I don't have anything. Any skills related to knot tying? I don't think. But uh, I, I don't have rope use. But then again, I don't think anyone has rope use uh, anymore. Oh, I will take a straight dexterity check. It's been a few. It's been a few additions. Plus your um, yeah. Um, I. Uh, I. I think I have a better chance of cutting it <laughs> um, okay but, you, can, uh, you can you can continue to attack it if you wish does it look to me as though it will take me longer to cut through it than it will for me to ex uh, extract him just by it might okay and if you that... can see the poison is still seeping from the vines yeah okay that's may no good continue to affect him yeah of course, the problem is if I do that, then they might come at me. But at the same time, um, who knows? It gives him more of a fighting chance. It does give him more of a fighting chance. So I, I will go ahead and do that. Uh, I will attempt to untangle him um, okay. using using my fin using my fingers. Um, and uh, that's 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 a terrible terrible roll. Um, <laughs> He becomes entangled. Entirely <laughs> possible. The fingers are gone. So that, that, <laughs> no, that, that, that's a five. It's like Christmas lights. Get your, you get your hand in there underneath that vine, and now it's stuck. <laughs> oh, they're going great. That's that's wonderful. Or either that, or you just can't get quite a good enough grip. Yeah. Just pull it away. All right. 
Well, so much for that. Then uh, I, I think my next action when I get one is going to be just shoot at it in frustration. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I've got left. Fritz. I'm going to reserve. Uh, Fritz is going to wait to see how effective um, Lasnus and uh, Narita are in whatever they choose to do because there are two options. Um, and Fritz is going to wait to see just what has to happen first. Okay. All right, Arita, that's you. We are going to try to wrestle little Birdman out of the vines. With strength, we'll see if this works. 15, wait, okay, wait, before the, that's before the modifier, hang on, hang on. 17, I know math. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, the Nautilid witch in her power suit comes over, grabs the vines, and rips them away from Rick Morale's throat. <laughs> She's strong. <laughs> Good move. And he is free. And he's not even here to thank me. Nope. I mean, he's he wasn't there. Gonna. He's just not Esther, conscious. Esther, he wasn't going to anyway. He's unconscious, right? <laughs> he, he won't remember it. <laughs> he won't remember. Um, is he, like, on the cusp of death right this moment? I don't know. If she, can she also... Um, he has to make death saves at this point, it's right? Not, we're not around to his turn yet, so you don't know. Okay. Um, he might be. So you've, you've we can hang on to him. Yeah. So Fritz, okay. uh, Narita has gotten Rekmer off yeah. if you would like Freed to up. use yours. Yeah, so Fritz is going to let go of the vine, knowing that there's not a whole lot of damage that Fritz could do with the jump, you know, the jazz thing. But... Fritz can pull a rabbit out of a hat and does a spare the dying by, oh, what the hell. Uh, Fritz is going to grab Rek Mara around the throat with the gauntlets because I'm not sure how they work yet. <laughs> he grabs like this. It's like, don't die. That's Where? spare the dying. <laughs> so we've gone from one grapple to safe. another. <laughs> Shut up. You're not awake. <laughs> <laughs> and you're free. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm also poisoned, by the way. Mm. We'll deal with that. You're stable. Mm. You, you took poison damage. You are not currently poisoned. Yes. No. We, we figured this out. Well, that's a nice distinction, I guess. <laughs> a useful one. stable. Yep. That brings us to the husks. The husk. Singular. I... And the maw demons. Wait. The Actually, got... nope, nope. 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 Correction. That brings us to the assassin vine, which can now attack Narita. Yay. <laughs> I'm real close to death already. Get ready, guys. <laughs> Thirteen. Oh Wait, uh, wait, uh, oh, my thing is 13. I think that hits. Yep. Get ready to carry this huge carcass out, guys. <laughs> you take 11 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled by the vine. That is, that is it. I guess I am unconscious. <laughs> Lasnus. <laughs> you know what you gotta do. <laughs> There's so many things I can do. Um, she's gonna see Rekmara lifeless on the ground and she leaps towards him going, oh no, and puts out a hand and it's all very anime with like the teardrop going that way and stuff. And uh, she's gonna do lay on hands and give him um, 10 hit points back. Okay. And my cats are shedding like crazy. 
Oh, yeah. shedding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. I, too, did not do shedding. <laughs> okay. It wasn't just me. Rick Morrell, you come to consciousness with 10 hit points. And it's your turn. <laughs> yes, well, uh, Rick Morrell is just going to... Uh, Struggles back up onto his feet using his sun staff. And he says, And Fritz will fall <sighs> off at that point. <laughs> you come to consciousness with Lasnus laying a hand on your forehead and Fritz with Fritz both grabbing hands around, around your neck. Your neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fritz lets it, go. It's, it's like my living nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rek Mara is going to take a couple of steps back away from the uh, murderous vines and uh, he's going to cast uh, Cure Wounds on himself Okay. and that's going to heal 1d8 is a six and uh my modifier is four so that is 10 hit points i'm back up to 20. Okay. all right uh and then we come to the the husk and the body And the husk turns to Fritz. Poor and it rolls a two and a three. It, it cannot hit you. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Being short sometimes has its advantages. <laughs> You're a smaller target. On occasion. Just ask and anybody who played Goldeneye in the N64. The Maw Demons try to grab it, but it has lurched aside while trying to grab Fritz, and they can't get a hold of it either. For some reason, the Benny Hill song is just <laughs> running through my head as we, we go through this <laughs> battle, which and I totally did not expect. <laughs> And a figure um, steps out of the trees uh, lean olive complexion dark hair pulled back into a knot a little bit of an underbite half orc not not who you would expect to see on a human occupied planet and he fires at the assassin vine again shouldn't he have taken some flaming damage too he's not in that tree he's one of in, in one of the surrounding trees Oh. You can't set everybody on fire. Sorry. Watch me. <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> We're in my NPC today. All right, so it takes nine points of radiant damage. And he says, get her out so we can heal her. And 
that brings us around to Cole's turn. Question. As yes. Unfortunately, this was one of those moments when my brain missed a piece. Um, vine still active or no longer active? Yes. The vine is currently up. grappling Narita, who is unconscious. And okay. the, uh, the stranger, the half-orc stranger, has stepped out of the tree line and and said, get her out so we can heal her. Yeah, get, get her out of... Presu Get her out of the vines. Presumably of the vines. Okay, yeah. Yes. So I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm just, I, I look at him, just look at him, just look at the, the, a very, very short amount of time has passed. I just look at the vines. I'm like, ah, for heaven's sake, <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I'm going to draw my, bl my blaster and try to shoot the vines. <laughs> I think that's going to, I think that's what, in my frustration, in my frustration, I'm going to attempt to do. <laughs> Because it is because it is. there is an Arbor Day, but today there. is not that day. This, this is true. <laughs> not today. Um. So. Hopefully, this isn't terribly irresponsible of me. <laughs> Cool. What are you doing? No, no, no. I'm sh I'm trying to shoot the vines. Okay. Other people have been shooting at the vines. I think right. I should get to shoot at the vines. Okay, you can That's... you can shoot at the vines. All right, here we go. Um, so that is. I think that is that. Yeah, no, yeah. It's uh, that's a twenty-two. Oh. Oh, that is that is well above more well well above five past its armor class. Excellent. So I'm also overcharging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Wait, was there another one? No, I'm just going to use these. Yeah. Okay, so that is. Oh, that's a lot. Um, that's 17. 17 uh, radiant damage. All right. Continue to deal damage to the vines. Uh, and Narita continues to be grappled. In our Good Lord. <laughs> Fritz. Are yeah, shooting at the vines with the gauntlets. Best I can do. Okay. Uh, five. Five is a miss. Yep. Oh. I think I'm frozen. You are. Your Marvelous. image is frozen. But it's a beautiful beautiful image you've risen on. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to try, should I try to get back into the call or should I just wait till the end of the fight? Why don't we um, wait till the end of the fight? Yeah. Okie doke. Okay. Yeah, wait till break, at least. Sure. Um, yeah. The most important thing is that the words are coming through. Yep. Yes. Good. All right. Now I can relax. Uh, and the Rita... Make a death saving throw. Roll me a d20. Nine. Nine is a fail. You get two more chances. Save me. Meanwhile, the assassin vine has you grappled and can't do anything else. Yeah. So that brings us to Lasness. Okay. Oh, you're back. Oh, am I? <laughs> hey, good time. Really abruptly, no, no. too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Um, this has there you had go. a vision from the matriarch. <laughs> <laughs> that was, she said your name and you're just like, Fuck. 
<laughs> I better straighten up. <laughs> There's a moment for you. <sighs> yes. Oh boy, this is a night of nights. Um, so as soon as Rekmara is awake and back on his feet, she sighs in relief and then looks over her shoulder and goes, <gasps> "Ma'am!" And she scrambles towards her and she uses the last of her five hit points for lay on hands. She said, "Oh, did I really yell, talking... ma'am?" Yeah. Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> oh lord, I broke the fourth wall in my desperation and embarrassment. This is great. I'm having a great time. Shouldn't you try to? Shouldn't you try to break her out of the vines? That requires her thinking about it rather than acting acting instinctively. I I was actually gonna. I thought I could do both though, because um, isn't lay on hands not a major action? It's a minor action. You have to break her out first, though, don't you? I, I don't know. I just have to get a hand on her, according to the to, to the text. But you might be, you might be right. Um, uh, it's a full action. Oh, it's a full hands. action. Yep. Okay. All right then. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, then can I redact what I said sure. and uh, try to tug Mem? Uh, wow. <laughs> Why is Lassen trying to reach out of the game? I know. <laughs> I was just say, do you want to go commune with your uh, great spirit or whatever again? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. These hands are so big. <laughs> it's like she's on a, some kind of crazy drug trip or something. <laughs> uh, oh, all right. Um, I'm going to try to get uh, Narita. I did it. <laughs> out from the vines. Uh, quick question. Do I still have the bonus? Yes. yes. You will still have a bonus section. Oh, cool, cool. No, no, no. I thought you meant action. the the, the evolution bonus. bonus. From yes. Rekmara. That's a good question. You don't have yes. to concentrate on that. Nope. And it's all about the length of the battle. Yes, mm -hmm. you still get the plus four. Okay. Oh, and Nadid. Hey. Hey. There you go. Hey, yo. So you ripped those vines off of Narita even harder than she ripped them off of Rekmara. <laughs> I am Star Pilot Private Chain Tower. You, and in the name of the Order of Sepulchre, I will tear you apart. And you do. <laughs> um, and uh, roll twice, you said? Uh -huh. Number nine plus one. You're just trying to break her out, right? No, no, that's the damage. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm not trying to hurt it or anything. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to... So you don't need to roll damage. You're just uh, pulling her out, basically, or so pulling excited. it out from around her. Um, so you do that. And she will fall free. And... Do you have a bonus action that you'd like to use? You can. Um, can I just pull her away with me? Yeah. You okay. Can, you, know, you can move her with you. I think that halves my movement or something. When yeah. I'm... Yeah. Yeah. So you get about 15 feet away. Uh, right. But I work out, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Or I got a so, whole lot to move, Narita. <laughs> so they can actually retreat away from the vines safely. That's that's a, that's a thing <laughs> that people can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's called perhaps, a tactical retreat. Perhaps. <laughs> Yes. Where's that yeah. freaking stick? It's on the ground by Rekmara. <laughs> Fantastic. <gasps> uh, that's Rekmara's turn. Yeah. So Rekmara um, is going to uh, put the branch, secure the branch away, and uh, stand over uh, Narita and Lasnus. And uh, he's going to cast Healing Spirit. And so what happens is he summons a um, nature spirit to appear in a five-foot cube. And everybody in the five-foot cube um, gets a 1d6 points of damage to their heals. Oh, to their heals. Okay. No, it's healed for 1d6 damage. So. Oh. Let's see, what about the rest of their bodies? Yeah, <laughs> works for Achilles really well. 
I, I rolled a fantastic one, but I'm still appreciative for the one. Thank you. Oh, I roll it. Okay, I'll do that. It's a whopping two. <laughs> this continues, so as long as you keep stay in, in the that, cube. In that cube. What does your um what does your nature spirit look like? Uh the nature spirit, uh that is a good question. Um Looks like a a big like my cornered mushroom kind of guy, and um, it's just sprinkling spores everywhere as it's like healing um, uh, visuals, I guess. Healing spores. I hope no one's allergic to mushrooms. Um, we'll know in a minute. <laughs> I did have so, a bad run in with some spores a couple of uh, missions ago. Mm. I'll get take five points of damage. Uh, five points of healing back. Oh, and so I guess uh, Narita is now stabilized and yep. awake. -ish. Yep. And anybody else who needs healing can move through that area as well. Just run through. <laughs> Fritz will probably edge that to that area, but also keep a, a wary eye out on where the assassin vine is going to be grabbing next, as well as where the blaster fire came from a minute yep. ago. Um, yeah, you saw the the shooter has is standing on the edge of the tree line, um, getting ready uh, for his next turn. But before that happens, we have a husk. Who is going to come after Rick Mara? Good, the one in that group that has the highest HP, I think. Uh, so we have a 9 and a 15. 15 hits. Okay. So that's 6 points of bludgeoning damage. God damn it, I just healed back five. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you healed and back five. <laughs> the Ma Demons both take a bite out of the husk. And it disappears through the portal into the abyss in their mouth. And the uh, stranger whose blaster is also shaped like a staff, but not a sun staff, the curse is an orcish. as the last of the husks disappears through the Ma Damon's uh, void mouth. And so he shoots at the Ma Damon. They've been so good to us. <laughs> this is always a temporary alliance. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes <clears throat> five points of damage. Yeah, um, so I think that uh, 
Yeah. Sort of looking at the, uh, look, looking at what we have and just sort of backing away from the, from, uh, where the vines are, uh, and, uh, just trying to, you know, I think back in the direction of that we were coming. Um, we have two maw demons still yes. that I presume are now turning on us. Perhaps. Um, I mean... They still they, look hungry. Yeah, they still look hungry. I, I kind of am just sort of assuming that they went for the husks first because of the void energy. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to just be like, Oh, great. Looks like... Looks like they're done with lunch, <laughs> and I'm going to uh, to switch to as we're sort of backing away in an in an effort to help cover our escape should we need it. Uh, I am going to uh, to to switch once again to the plasma launcher and launch some plasma. Okay. At uh, one of these things, um, whichever one looks like it is more injured than the other. There is one that looks more injured. Let's aim. Let's aim the at that one. The second one has not taken any damage yet. Ah, good. It'll be good to fight that one when it's healthy. Uh, so, so the the number I rolled is uh, is a one, which oh. is a considerably low number. It is. Um, but I don't think there's anyone else right in that area, if I'm no, there remember is not. correctly. There's just the two maw demons and the tree and the and the vine. Yeah. So, so I I feel as though the plasma probably does not hit does not hit. Mm. <laughs> it sort of fizzles out in the swampy ground. Yeah. Damn it! Continue backing away. Okay. Fritz. What do I know about mod demons things? Make a history check. History. Ooh, 19. Ma demons, also known as abyssal maws, are lesser demons that are constantly hungry for carnage and mortal flesh. Um, typically they are summoned from the abyss by cultists belonging to a particular entity, um, um, and are used to, um, just to wreak havoc and carnage on the battlefield and basically eat their way through that group's enemies. So I'm trying to see if I know anything about um, materials that might be either weaknesses or protective. Okay. You know, anything from adamantium to antimatter to okay. whatever. Um. They are resistant to cold, fire, and lightning. Okay. They are immune to poison. Okay. They, um, they don't have any particular vulnerabilities, but... Lovely. Um, yeah. But you can damage them like you damage anything else. Um, Badly. But whatever they consume... Yeah is usually transported to a particular place, be it the realm that they came from or what have you. So All right. that's why they're always hungry. Whatever they eat, it doesn't end up in their own stomach. It yeah. ends up somewhere else. Bucky. Got it. How do they survive? <laughs> Rage. Anger. <laughs> magic also magic not that again may, may you're frozen again yeah I've uh, it's been that way for a bit uh, it's alright you'll come back around thing... during your turn it's... 
Yeah. <laughs> Fritz is going to hold a turn. Uh, Fritz has nothing at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a particular trigger that you're holding this readying this action for? Um, potentially digging something out of my bag if I can figure out what the hell to bring out of my bag that might be useful in this situation. I just realized I'm proficient with all weapons, including exotics. I'm going to pull out a bolo net combination thing and throw it at one of these, at the creature that has not taken damage in the hopes of slowing it down. Okay. Take that out. My dex roll. Oh, natural one. I managed to probably completely wrap myself in it and fall on the ground. <laughs> you tried. This is why you don't ask a craftsman to get into a fight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I think we should probably go to break. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we, can, yeah we can totally do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> have a quick, have a quick break between monster types. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and see if we can unfreeze Lazarus and get her to stop talking to her goddess for a minute or whatever. So. Too. Too. All right, folks, we'll be back in, uh, in a few minutes. <laughs> My see God, it's full of stars. <laughs> it really is. Hello, welcome to the break. I am here with Greg to talk about various things that he has been doing in the various places. Uh, welcome, welcome once more to the break. <laughs> I, I'm back again. I'm. I love. It's just hello, hello. <laughs> it's, it's it's fantastic. Yes, they they haven't uh, they haven't uh, they they haven't started speeding up with their light cycles yet. So I think we're good. We we've got a few minutes. Um, anyway. <laughs> At least I can't see them doing that down there. Anyway, yeah. uh, no. Uh, so we've we've talked previously uh, about stuff you've got going on on your channel, but I also wanted to uh, take a few minutes and talk about things that you've been doing on other channels because uh, any time I see you basically playing games in other places, it is always hysterically entertaining. It is wonderful, and uh, so I, uh, I I just wanted to see what you've got going on now. Um, you, uh, you have a, a game of Simbarum going on somewhere, yes. That's correct. Yes, on Tuesday nights at seven thirty Eastern time, over on Web DM's uh, Twitch channel, we are playing a little Simba Room, which is a dark, low fantasy, uh, magic is bad can kill you type of system. Where the it, it has a lot of, to be quite honest, a lot of Witcher elements to it. Where the creatures that are wandering in the the, the dark forest of Davakar are twisted and unlike things that maybe we've come across in, in other traditional fantasy systems, um, it, it lends itself for a level of, I don't know, unease, I think. Uh, the system itself is very easy to play. It's, it's essentially an opposite system. You want a low roll or low roll, you want to roll low and uh, you want to be able to hit those lower marks to be able to you know crit and do things like that but again once we've spoken before i like the narrative more than anything else and simba room lends itself by the ability to make your characters carry burdens that also allow them to have boons and can really give you a lot of meat to kind of work with 
with a character and I like it quite a bit. The, the character generation is very fun. Again, fantastic players. I get to play with Emma, Kiana, Billy's over there, DM'd by Pruitt, just fantastic stuff. Awesome. Great group. Very cool, very cool. Um, and I know it's, I, I've also, I think I've seen you over on, uh, on Lindy's channel a few times, Laugh Love Lindy, uh, doing yeah, a few I, things. I hate her, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get those pictures back. No, um, <laughs> no, I, I, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Um, Lindy runs a channel that is very likely in the way that I appreciate things. It is absolutely one of the best ones on Twitch because she surrounds her, surrounds herself with her friends, her gaming group. It is very much like a tabletop around the couch, around the coffee table group that is absolutely excellent role players and they drop in and out of systems so effortlessly and these different characters it's a it's a sight to behold and i'm just incredibly pumped to be a part of uh producer trav travis's aliens game that's once a month on fridays it is inc i mean weaving in aliens and predator and blade runner and different elements of this making a, a combined world out of all of these absolutely fantastic and uh, when somebody is able to produce a world like that that's one thing when you're able to produce a world like that because you love it and you know it by heart you do, you're not flipping through books when somebody asks you about a bit of lore for your world you know it you know it because it's you you've created it it's part of your dna that's travis with that aliens game and um the absolute flip side of that is we play our Taosaurian games, uh, teenagers from outer space once every month on Saturday mornings. And um, Lord, it is a rated X Saturday morning cartoon with a fantastic GM in Kiana, who in all likelihood, we've, we've probably cost her quite a bit in just co-pays. Um, but uh, it, it is it's absolutely so much fun. It's Lindy, it's producer Trav, it's Emma, uh, and myself as we jump in and out of this uh, fantastically delicious, wacky story um, based on a very old, uh, you know, 90s driven RPG for Ar Artel Sorian. And um, they were so kind over at Artel Sorian to actually make our characters the downloadable uh, 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 pre-gens. So if you want to play the game and you go over to their website, we're the pre-gens you get to play. So, <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's, it really is. It's super dope. And they made these really cool sheets for us. And uh, they, we, I mean, I'm, I think it's been announced. I'm going to say it anyway. We're doing a live show at Gen Con. So uh, that'll be fun. And I can't wait yes. to, uh, you know, do something like that. But it's a great, great system. It's a great, great GM great great game and a fantastic cast that i get to joke around with and again i'm blessed to be along for the ride with all of the shows i mentioned so it is awesome and uh, yeah folks i definitely go and check those out because um they I, I again unfortunately uh with stuff that i have going on i only catch snippets uh by and large but the snippets i catch are so freaking awesome <laughs> that i i definitely think uh that that folks need to go out and check these things out they're an absolute delight. Uh, also, if uh, folks are looking for you online, where should they go? Uh, easiest place to find me, my friend, is over on Twitter at uh, Grimjack21502. And just let's link up over there, talk about all things nerdy, and uh, I'll tell you where to find the good stuff over at Laugh Love Lindy and Salty Sweet Games and Counter Roleplay and all that Tall Squall and all my friends at the Scraticus Academy and across the, the, the great world, of course, here on Jim's channel and everybody that uh, has created and creates in this lovely community needs to be supported as best we can because there's stories out there just on the horizon, um, you know, off the table, just, just great stuff. But uh, yeah, jump over there. And if you're new to the system, I will point you to the whichever star from the left and straight on to great stories. So I also highly recommend, recommend checking out Tales from the Grim as well as uh, this. Uh, this fellow has rather a lot of involvement with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but uh, take care, folks, uh, and uh, we'll see you later.
We have returned. And now, demons. Oh. Right before we went to break, the uh, mod demons swallowed the last of the husks. And everyone had to scramble to figure out what to do about these uh, giant toothy tree stump looking things. Um, I think we were on Fritz's turn. And, and Fritz had managed to get themselves entangled in a net that they pulled out of the backpack that apparently caught on something that caught on something else. And Fritz rolled a one in the process of trying to throw this thing and probably stumbled around a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that brings us to Narita's turn. Um, question. If I use a potion of healing, can, first, can I use a potion of healing? Yes. Two. Yeah. Does that count as like a major action? Uh, you can, if you're going to feed it to somebody else who's like unconscious, you have to like open it up and pour it down their throat, make sure they swallow it. That would take your whole action. But if you're just going to quick toss it back yourself, yes. uh, I'll, I'll give it to you as a bonus action. Perfect. Um, so we're going to try... Thunderwave. Oh, go ahead. What? <laughs> Rick Morales going to say, you know, if, if you have a hex, now would be a good time to use it. I don't, I don't have a good hex for this. <coughs> I mean, I could do cackle, but that just extends my... Can I get a hint, Rick Morales, which, which hex? I don't know what hexes you have. None that work for this. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I've been looking. None of them are well. That's not true. I guess I can try. Would slumber work on one of them? One way to find out. All right, we're gonna cast slumber at the one that hasn't taken any damage. Okay. How does slumber work? It's a spell. Okay. It's a hex. Okay. Stuff, stuff happens. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. <laughs> they put on pajamas. They have a party. <laughs> um, wisdom saving throw. It will fall unconscious until it takes damage or until the end of my next turn. Oh, wait. No. Undead creatures. Creatures which are immune to being charmed and those with whose hit points are greater than five times my witch level are immune. So maybe this won't work. I don't think points? demons are undead per se. Demons yeah. are not undead. Okay. You don't know whether or not they can be charmed. Right. And you don't know about their hit points, which might be the sticker. Mm -hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, I guess we're trying it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Doesn't Rec Morales say that's unfortunate a lot of times before somebody goes unconscious? With her. No, I mean, b before this fight, the only time anyone had ever gone unconscious was Lasnus. If and I think it, then, then it's yeah. 100%. <laughs> and I think you said it this fight, too, so. <laughs> hmm. So, do you want to use your hex? Yeah, everyone else has failed. Let's try it. <laughs> okay. What does that look like? What does it look like when you try to hex this creature? Full of teeth and arms. So she's kind of lying on the ground because, you know, she's got a whole two hit points. <laughs> so she's kind of laying there. And just sort of gently just puts her arms out. And then says, please sleep. And just waves gently. It's three red eyes blink at you, and nothing happens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> three for three. <laughs> Damn you, creature. Damn you. Well, she's going to drink her 
potion of healing w- real quick before it decides to attack her and take those points back, I guess. Um, quick question. Do we roll on <laughs> our turn the heal from the cube? Oh, yeah. My good cube heal. Yes, you can. Ooh. Five. You, you just see the, the myconid fair, um, spirit just start um, sashaying all around to um, send out another cloud of spores that sparkle and glitter <laughs> and shower the three <laughs> characters in its uh, recovering glory. Healing glitter. Great. We'll never get out of the ship. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> How many, how many points does a healing potion heal? I actually can't find that. Two D four plus two. Oh. Two D four plus two. Okay. That'll be three. Ooh, four, seven, nine. Woo! Look at us getting all this health back just to lose it in a minute. (laughs) But you might still live. Uh, That's true. (laughs) That is not math. All right. That's not math. That's fiction. That's me not knowing how to count. (laughs) Okay. So. Anything else you'd like to do? Just gonna hang out. She's going, she's going to stand up and then not do anything else. Okay. <laughs> you stand up. Bye, potion. And everyone has moved away from the assassin vine. Correct? Yeah. We're at least 15 feet. Yeah. At least. Is anyone more than 15 feet away Rob, from the assassin oh. vine. Yeah. I, I I think human movement is like 30, so I'm probably at least as that. As far as you can get? Yeah. Okay. I did not like it. <laughs> I, th- I think we were at least 20 feet away. Okay. Well, Lazarus had to drag giant Narita away, so only made it 15 feet. Okay. Yeah. You were already at the edge, so when you think about it, it's like 15 feet away from, you know, within its maximum we, radius. We think. I'm going to guess don't. that. We need that football thing when they're checking on the on the fourth down <laughs> to see if they <laughs> made the chains. The- yeah. <laughs> Bless this. Yes. The vines lash out at you. Uh... Everybody does. <laughs> oh my god! No, that's a twenty-two to hit. Yeah, that that hit. <laughs> Why do we get "Oh no, not again" running through my head? Take seven points of bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. Seven points, you said? Yes. Okay, guys. She's good news. Still... Is, is she still in the uh, spirit? No, no, like being a little spear, getting little sprinkles. It didn't drag me, I don't think. Oh, it it just the um the vines and roots on the ground around you just spring up and grab you. It's got runners. <laughs> So, so we're we're this. still technically in the in the in the glitter, but Rekmar just looks at this and like, well, isn't this some kind of bullshit? And Fritz is like, okay, now I know what I need to get out of my backpack. Ain't off. <laughs> Better. Rocket chainsaw. <laughs> 
You're talking to a craftsman who, although I can use <laughs> weapons, I'm not very good at them. <laughs> We're going to go with something that's got a little more firepower. <laughs> fire power. Fire power. Emphasis on fire. All right. So right now, it is Lasnus's turn. Um, okay. You can use your action to try to escape these vines. Or you can continue trying to hit things. Um... Well, now that Narita is up and Rakmara is up, um, I'm in a happy mood for that. So I just want to try to get out of these vines. Okay. Make a strength or dexterity check. Your super strength. <laughs> uh, 24. Excellent. You, you flex and <laughs> bust out of those vines those that follow the matriarch and the order of the sepulchre never give up are you afraid see i told you would you like to move yes please okay <laughs> you can uh, move as far as you want now <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to basically, like, uh, a, a Zoidberg sound effect of whoop, 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 as I move as far as possible. Right. Um, that's that's about 30 feet, I think, in okay. the turn. Yep, yep, you back up. No, 25. Okay. All right. That can still that'll still get you out of out of the reach of the vines at this point. Thanks. <laughs> We never give well, up, but we do run. That brings us to Dr. Birdhouse. Rick Morrell. Dr. Birdhouse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But did Lazarus get her um, hit points for... Uh... Oh. On my way out, I took another six hit points back. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's time for me to recover. Uh, I recover five. Mm -hmm. okay, let me just update that. Desk is a little crowded at the moment. And so, uh, Rek Mara is going to... Um... How close is he to the uh, Void Demons? Um, they were right next to the tree, so how close do you want to be? I don't want to be close at all. <laughs> you're probably about 15 feet away from them, if you're okay. with so, your um, spirit. Yeah, so he's, he's going to uh, instruct his healing spirit to follow him, and he's going to move... Um, he's he's going to double the distance between him and the... Uh, Void demons. Okay. That should also put you out of the reach of the vines. And uh, he's just going to point his sun staff at one of the demons and fire it. Okay. Do you want the injured one or the uninjured one? The uh, injured one. Okay. Oh, wait, that's the wrong dice. 18. 18 hits? That would be 10 points of damage. Okay. It's looking pretty rough, but still standing. And that brings us to the Maw Demon's turns. They're gonna go for coal. One Yay. goes for coal. Hooray. Um, it rolls a six to hit you. That does not hit. It cannot manage to get a bite. The next one is going for Lasnus. Hmm. <sighs> it rolls a 17 to hit you. Yes. You will take 
nine points of piercing damage. Okay. Good news, guys. I'm still alive. Fantastic. And that's it for them. And the half orc will fire at the wounded maw, maw demon. And it'll take eight points of radiant damage from his blaster staff, and it dies. So there's one left. And that brings us back to Cole. Uh, the, one that, uh, the one that just died, was yes. that the one that was attacking me, or was that the other one? Uh, the one that was attacking you. Okay, excellent. So now I'm going to... Um, I bring switch to the blast switch to the uh, um, I keep, I keep calling it a blaster but in this system they're all blasters the repeater mm -hmm. um, and once again you know take a shot at the other one okay that is uh, that that is a one mm, that is a miss yes. Hammond for Jim. Last is the, uh, the blaster fire zips right by your ear. Going to switch dice now. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to do, Cole? Back up. Keep backing up. <laughs> okay. Uh, Back up just a touch more. <laughs> yeah. It's a good idea. So, we've still got one up. Just one, um, and the uh, vines, and if if you want to do anything about the tree once you've dealt with the actual creatures. Yeah. So, one maw demon, and everybody's backed away from the assassin vine, so... So we moved out of the range of the assassin vines. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. Okay. I'm not going to worry about the tree for the moment. Yeah, we've got the, the one demon is the problem. Um, and what I have, it is resistant to. I'm going to pull out my mace and literally just run up and whack the damn thing and hope okay. for the best. And hope I don't end up in some weird plane, which could end up in an entirely new adventure well, as you try to find me. Mm -hmm. Right? Not right. giving you ideas at all, right? Um, okay, let's do this. Team 19. 19 hits. Yes. Not a lot of damage, though, so. <laughs> One damage. But you hit it. Yeah, it got its attention. Yep. Sure do. <laughs> Narita. Um, I really wanted to move further away from Murder Vine. Um, but I guess somebody else's life is on the line, so I guess we'll just stay here for right now. Uh, we will try Hollowing Curse on the void thing. Okay. Can you curse a demon? What does that do? Necrotic damage and curse up to one minute. I'm fine if it doesn't curse it, if it hits the damage. This is going to be a moment where I find out that it doesn't work. I do, I do love being ineffective. Listen, when we team wipe, we'll roll things that will just take these things out on the next turn. Oh my god, the next character I'm going to make is going to be insane. Okay, <laughs> so it's a creature you can see within range to make a dexterity saving throw. So I will make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. 
it rolls a four minus one. Yeah. yeah. It fails. Yeah. Woo. Let's get something higher than one damage. Twelve damage. Okay. And uh, so the tendrils of black mist extend from your fingertips, latching onto the maw demon and draining it of its vitality. And that will continue because it is cursed. Um, well, now can I walk over to where, wherever Drekmara is so I can get some healing spores? Uh, you have to stay within 30 feet of it, I think. I think he's within 30 feet. But yeah, yeah. You can move over towards him and get some healing. Well, what more points of healing? Um, anything else you want to do, Narita? No. Okay. The assassin vine cannot reach anybody, so it's lastness. Didn't both the vo the maw demons die? Nope. One's still alive. Oh, good. Then I'm going to try to kill it. Um, I'm going to go racing at it and um, fire off my rocket hammer. Okay, and you can attack with advantage because Fritz is currently standing there beating it with a mace. Cool. Okay. Um, 23. That's a hit. Okay. Um... This one. And I'm also going to roll the d4 for the damage because it's a rocket hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, f Nine. Okay. Takes nine points of damage, and that brings us to Rekmara. Rekmara is just going to raise one of his hands and, at the um, Void Demon, just say Hadouken and cast uh, Sacred Flame. It rolls an eight on its saving throw. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. Throw me some damage. That's an eight. Okay. It's looking pretty rough, but it's still clinging to life. And it's the Maw Demon's turn. Oh, I forgot to roll my heel back. Five more for me. Narita. The Maw Demon sees you with your curse and your necrotic energy being pulled from its body. And it's going to try to make its way towards you to attack you. But before it can do that, it has to step away from Lasnus and Fritz. And each of you can take an attack of opportunity with your melee weapons as it uh, tries to move away. 
Oh, absolutely. I'll continue to whack it at its non-existent knees. Okay. Uh, 12? No, I don't think that's got it. 12 just misses. Yeah. Um, I got a 20, not a natty, just a 20, okay. and um, that would be um, 14 points of damage. All right. Overkill. <laughs> Lastness <It's>, overkill. <laughs> splatter this small demon across the swampy floor. Um, great. Um, as she delivers the blow, I imagine her kind of like flipping in the air around and then swinging down with her legs up high and she yells, For the verse! Bam! Mm-hmm. And it is no more. So, um, unless you would like to uh, keep picking away at the uh, assassin vine. I'm good. Yeah. Anybody speak orc? I'm just going to shoot the vine one or two more times just to make my, myself feel better, but I'm not actually going to uh, care whether I hit it or not. So. Okay. Just to drive the point home. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Narita would speak orc with the suit. Uh, it was speaking common, I thought. Yeah, it was. Oh, was yeah. it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have orcish, but I, uh, I, I can... Yeah. You could understand yeah. his yeah. colorful language when the, yeah. uh, when the husks were consumed. Yeah. It was very Shakespearean. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Crisis, Pop and Jay. <laughs> so, so that brings you out of combat. What would you like to do? Make sure we've got the damn stick. I believe Rick Mara has secured the stick. Great. I look for the keys to the vehicle. <laughs> you still have those. Okay, good. That's all I'm worried about at this point. Taking a long, hard stare at Rek Whatever. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't just blast the branch out of there, those things would have come out of the brush anyways while Cole was tangled up trying to climb like a monkey into that tree. Probably would have been strangled by those assassin bodies there too. Maybe. So if anything. Or maybe if we anything, could have talked sense to the tree. I'm a druid. There is no such thing as talking senses into hanging trees. I didn't know trees could kill you, so who knows? I'm just going Maybe to turn to the half orc during this conversation and say, <laughs> Hi, thanks, by the way. <laughs> Don't mind him. <laughs> You're welcome. Sorry, folks, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's that terrible. No, no. Perfect. Perfect. He's a tall druid. He's kind of mumbling to herself and walking away. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. What are you doing out here? We were looking for a stick. I, I, I believe that there Cole was talking to the orc. places to find sticks. Yeah, we got a client who wants that one in particular. He says gesturing. Why? I don't know. She wants to make it into a into a bookshelf or something. I didn't ask. Cursed bookshelf, maybe. Yeah, probably. It's a com it's a component of some kind. They need for some kind of ritual, probably. True. These things are strange. Speaking of rituals, you 
You wouldn't happen to know anything about the ritual that summoned these demons of gluttony. Can't say it's uh, any of our for fortes. No. Mm. We're just here for a stick. No, we were just getting the branch and then the things came out of the bush. We're not with the garrison. Well, how would we know? <laughs> I hope not. You would know if you, you're you not military. <laughs> Certainly not, no. <laughs> kind of look around at each other <laughs> and just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Good. I can show you this circle, the summoned, the beasts. I overheard the cultists summoning the Mo demons, but I could not tell anyone for obvious reasons. Not so obvious reasons. Yeah, not at all. Uh, it's, it's the war. I say it's just sort of too. Oh, uh, uh, because yeah. who is he and he is they and we are all together and he's a walrus, right? Got it. Sorry, I'm still trying to keep all of this straight. It's, it's. <laughs> yes. Politics are complicated. And here I am just yeah. trying to exist. You know, politics don't, don't give a damn for individuals, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. So you're just hanging out here in the woods, trying not to get killed in this war, and spying on people who are summoning demons to this planet? I... I am patrolling the woods for undead. I hunt them. I have hunted them since I was a child. Oh. Everyone's got to have a hobby, I suppose. I happened to overhear these cultists summoning these demons for someone they called Sirgal. Does that ring any bells for Fritz? We get history check. Oh, natural 20. Oh, excellent. Oh, dear. Excellent. Um, you have likely, since you have uh, had your ear to the ground about the goings on around Seltmo, you have likely heard uh, rumors of the Void Princes, the nation of pirates that patrols the space around the area and Sirgal was a famous pirate uh, very uh, fearsome and bloodthirsty and also his ship was supposedly destroyed about 10 years ago was this the ship that no, this was not the ship that disappeared. That was a construct running that ship. This yeah, was different ship. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. This wasn't the ship that was was this is a different ship from the one that was in the legend about the guy that got chased out here or was it? Uh, yep, a different ship. Okay. Yep. The, Lots of uh, shipwrecks. Sergal's oh, yeah, yeah. ship was called the Infinite Tomorrow. And it was destroyed 10 years ago. How uh, was it destroyed? It crashed into a moon. Nearby? 
It crashed into a moon somewhere in the Avira Holy Lands. Oh. So. It's not very nearby there. at all. Over there. Somewhere. Yeah. So, somehow, there are cultists here, maybe connected to a well known space pirate who may or may not, probably not, have gotten destroyed when the ship was destroyed in Avira territory. Huh. I do the like Reader's Digest version for the group. And Cole, since you're from around here, you've probably heard this story as well. Um, okay, uh, so just so that uh, we can clarify one thing in Jim's brain, uh, what is the relationship between is is the, this is the the pirates? What's the relationship between the pirate pirate and demon prince? Are they like supposed to be Not the a same demon thing? prince? Okay. The the pirates call themselves the Void Princes. Gotcha. I understand now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So many different ways to look at the Void. Okay. And it looks back at you. Yeah. And uh, and so the and he's saying that the cultists. We're working they, for... They mentioned yeah. the name. Uh, Circle. Is what? Is part of their ritual? Uh, that they were... Yeah, they... In, in the context of they were... They were... Performing this ritual on behalf of... Prince Sergal. Supposedly, either either continuing his mission or working for him, who is supposed to be dead. Hmm. In either case, probably not a particularly savory activity, especially if it results in random undead also floating around here, as well as the demons that they tend to summon yeah i mean even if it's just you know there's a even if it's just a bunch of folks just blindingly trying to uh follow in the guy's footsteps or, or, or who you know d regardless of how much of the story is true or not if it's a bunch of people who believe that it is mm -hmm. and they might then that's gonna that's gonna be trouble if they can do stuff like this Yep. You know, I bet I could find out a little bit more about something effective against these demons back on the Maw in the data state base, and we could drop off the stick and get out of these woods. I mean, it's a good point. Um, you don't, you don't escape and figure it out? I'm really getting tired of mud in my boots. Um, I'd like to get back to the vehicle before it sinks into the swamp and I have to pay back the deposit. Um, you know so what yeah. we could do? We could wash off our feet where all those ships went missing and there's a siren. Yeah, but in order to do that, we have to get to clean water. In order to do that, we have to get back to our little bus. We can do that. So let's start by just like, getting on the bus and then once i'm driving the bus i get to say where we go so <laughs> oh i see so we may or may not pass some place <laughs> to wash our feet but we are definitely going to go back into town okay do you uh and i'm just going to say this to the to the gentleman we've been speaking with are you like stuck here do you need like do you need a lift out of here because we're we're based out of salt Moss station where would they go? Anywhere. Space is infinite. And it's so infinite, you could do as many loop-de-loops as you want on any planet or any part of the cosmos anywhere. No loop-de-loops on, uh, on exit. <laughs> Except for with these guys. But even if you could sneak me past the garrison, I have family here. Okay. Oh. 
Well, you should at least visit it and gaze into the infinity that is existent. My mother, she is. She tells stories. Perhaps one day. Yeah. Until then, is it? I have some husks to hunt. Well, hang on. Is is it just your family down here, or is there like? Or are we talking? Is there like an? Is there a, a settlement out here or something that? Kind of settlement. Sorry, I didn't quite hear what he said before. So what uh, kind of settlement? As in, like, I don't know. Is in we? Is there like an? Is there like a village out here, or is it a? What? Is there a town out here? Do we need to? The, the, that we need to be wor- You know, worried about getting attacked or something. A town but, of orcs. No, I mean that we need to worry about <laughs> a, a, more demons getting summoned and attacking. Is no. what I'm saying. Oh no. Okay. There is a town, but, and there is a farming community, but no, no. Um, my family and I, we have that covered. Gotcha. All right, well, best of luck to you then. And to you as well. Your fight's a noble one for the verse, Lesnar says as she runs off. Oh, and uh, if you ever need to get a hold of us for any random reason, if you want to contact somebody on Salt Ma, um, I dig into my bag and pull out a um, medium range uh, communicator that's dialed into a single uh, ID, kind of like a um, one track beacon into my data pad. It's like, if you're in the area, look me up. I will. Three just says goodbye in Orcus. Marita. Dark Mara just doesn't. Dark Mara doesn't say anything. Yeah. Nope. Marita, as as this young man uh, speaks of of his um, that his devotion to the hunting and slaying of the undead. You you feel a sort of uh, that that resonates with you a bit, especially after my close call with husk monsters and branches and stuff, because somebody wanted to shoot first. I feel somebody. It right there. Somebody. But um, the the uh, the young half orc druid. Uh, transforms into a cat bat and flies away. Nice trick. That's it. So, worth knowing. So you can return to your vehicle and make your way back to Fort Brackish. Got it. Find, you can find lodgings if you wish, or you can just go down to the beach and get cleaned up. <laughs> Clean our feet, be the siren. I'll probably go back to the ship and take a shower. <laughs> beach or no beach. Huh? You, can, you can go back to, to you to where your ship is docks and you can, yep. you can wash in your own accommodations. Home sweet home. And I think that's where we're going to wrap up for the night. Uh, We will not be back on Sunday, but uh, we will be back in June. And between now and then, we're all going to level up. Yay! Yay! Level four? Yes. Yay. Coolness. Oh, the places you'll go. The creatures I will throw at you. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna yeah, see boy but princes if... and, and yeah. sirens. Go Have back some and visit fire some, vines. Visit some brain worms. Oh, brain worms. 
No brain worms. Brain worms. I can't believe we survived that. Uh, so what were you saying, Anino? Yeah, so fuck those assassin vines. <laughs> <laughs> they were so friendly. Would it would it change? They just your wanted mind? to hug you. They don't understand social distancing. No. <laughs> if you knew that those vines were gonna happen, would you have fired that shot? Yeah. I would have. Just from further stay, away. Stay 30 feet away. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have. And then I would have just let, I don't know, you go and fetch the fallen branch. This then, after I saved you from the damn vines, you jerk. <laughs> he, he was he was unconscious and doesn't remember any of that. So. Doesn't remember getting rescued. <laughs> nope. The, the wreck marad does not remember any of that. <laughs> does not remember, so does not acknowledge. <laughs> Didn't happen. Nope. Oh God. Well, uh, this was awesome. Thank you so much uh, for. I'm so glad we made it back. Yes. <laughs> managed to conquer the techno demons, and actually, uh, yes. and, and actually managed to 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 find out what was lumbering toward us. And as it turned out, it was many many more things than we expected. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that was very cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go around and do our outros. Uh, feel free to tell folks uh, where they can find you and uh, any you know uh, last thoughts about this session, favorite moments, or what have you. And uh, we shall start with our station master, Alyssa. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in, even though this is not our regularly scheduled programming. My name is Alyssa, at Origami Shuriken on Twitter. And you can find me on Monday afternoon at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern for Encounter Role Plays The Wall, in which I play a wildling healer named Runa. And uh, I was absent for the last session because of technical difficulties, and someone got seriously injured and was nearly killed by a skull ape. And so I will have my work cut out for me when we return. <laughs> Uh, other than that, you can find me back here in June on Sundays for more of this. Hey. Yay! Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now let us head up to Mem. Hey, I'm Mem. Um, you can find me on Twitch at Uncertain Memory and on Twitter sometimes at Uncertain Mem. Um, I still <laughs> mostly just kind of show up here most Sundays. Um, Every now and then I kind of pop up somewhere else, but then I forget to tell anyone that I'm there. So then I'm there and no one knows. Um, I, let's see, favorite, favorite moment tonight. Probably Wreck Mirage is getting, getting rescued and then getting up and just kind of rolling away. Doing his thing. <laughs> Should have left him there. <laughs> That's not true. We needed you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I did bring you back from dead, too. Did you? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's, I joke, I acknowledge and appreciate also the healing scores. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's, let's move away from that awkward moment and head over to... <laughs> And head over to May. Hi, everybody. My name's May. Speaking of awkward moments. <laughs> Stop describing my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is May. You can find me on Twitter at Maidlin. I don't do that much. The best place to find me is right here on Sundays in June coming up. Um, my favorite thing tonight was the feast and famine of Cole's Dice. That was fantastic. It had so much drama. Uh, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time, it's bone dry. I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, over to Kazimi. Yep, so I'm Kazimi. Uh, I'm here uh, when we're on, and otherwise I don't exist. Uh, and my favorite moment tonight was actually getting to see our lovely station master in full fluid graphic movement and hear 
all of the words. Well, I didn't like all of the words, but it was wonderful to hear them all so that we could understand just how much trouble we really were in. So I'm just really glad we got over that hump. I was worried for a while, but yeah, just nice to be back. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Totally. Um, and finally, Anino. How's it going, everyone? My name's Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. Um, yeah, this uh, this this fight uh, got a lot deadlier than um, I think anybody on this <laughs> side of the table um, really uh, expected it to. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think it was pretty much downhill when we discovered it was not one usk that was uh, shambling towards us, <laughs> but uh, five or six demons and uh, a murderous tree to boot. Good times, good times. But uh, level four is an exciting time for characters. So um, look forward to seeing uh, what sorts of uh, class defining powers that uh, we pick, but uh, in some people's cases, never use. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, tomorrow I am pulling a gym and I am doing a double duty. Uh, because I got last minute recruited uh, to a one shot hosted on Salty Sweet Games tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time in honor of uh, Asian American Pacific Islander. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be hosted by Kiana, who has appeared on this channel several times, brandishing lots and lots of knives. And uh, yeah, so um, and then after that, uh, I will be back on this channel at 8 p.m. Eastern time for another round of Invisible Sun on this endless train ride. The eternal train. <laughs> it never, it never stops. <laughs> uh. <laughs> to be fair, it was mostly the library. That's true. <laughs> it's a big damn library inside a frog. Um, excellent. All right, folks. Well, uh, that, uh, that leaves me. I'm Jim. Um, I am other doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimyesthatgym.com, where uh, you can find links to, uh, to various projects that I'm working on, uh, podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. Um, I've got links down below to my website, Twitter, YouTube channel, and some fiction and games I've been working on, along with links to game signups and applications to join our Discord. Um, so tomorrow... Uh, we will probably be doing Invisible Sun. I have to see, uh, one thing, just as far as, uh, you got, uh, just make sure I'm not behind the eight ball on getting some stuff done, so there may be, hopefully, hopefully we'll still be doing Invisible Sun, but there is, there, 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 there may be a slight hurdle that uh, I will, uh, get into with folks privately if it comes, if it comes around, uh, just as far as, uh, tomorrow in particular goes, but, uh, we will, we will, with any luck, be back on the train, um. On Sunday, uh, I am uh, running a one-shot of Paranoia, um, which uh, is, it's been a little while since I've run it, but it's, uh, it's uh, shaping up. The, uh, the players are getting very excited, um, and uh, we're, we're going to take a stab at it. This, uh, this uh, you know, far future dystopian uh, game that is uh, in, in which uh, uh, everyone's a clone and also a traitor, and hilarity ensues. Uh, <laughs> very, very Orwellian game. Um, and, uh, of course we will not be having our, we, we, we're doing this tonight, but won't be doing it Sunday. Uh, normally we do it Sunday nights. Um, Monday nights I'm over on, uh, Salty Sweet Games playing in their, uh, in their 5e campaign, Strange Invasion, Assault on the Barrier Peaks. And, uh, then Thursday, um, I, uh, in the afternoon I am running Deadlands Noir over on Encounter Roleplay. And then Thursday night, back here for The Sprawl, a Powered by the Apocalypse cyberpunk game run by guest MC Brian. So very much looking forward to that continuing. We've laid out a plan. Now we're going to see if we can execute it. Um, and the, the plan is mostly beat things up. That's, that's I think, going to pretty much be the plan. Um, Sign-ups are currently open for a one-shot in uh, June of Lords of Gossamer and Shadow. That is a diceless RPG that is kind of the spiritual successor to the Amber Diceless RPG. Um, where uh, the, the characters are uh, very sort of ultra-powerful beings who can walk through multiple realities. 
um, and shape them to a certain extent to their will. Um, and uh, I've always wanted to try it out, so we're going to try it out uh, around, uh, around the middle of uh, June. So uh, sign-ups are open for that. Um, if you want to sign up for anything, you can go down below to click on RPG sign up or go to jimmyesthatgym.com and click on game sign up. As always, beginners are welcome. So when we hit the end card, um, I am going to send a raid over, actually over to, uh, over to Trooper SJP, who uh, some of you folks who watch this show will know as Oceanus. Um, he is running a, uh, it's, it's a wonderful campaign, fate campaign that he's put together. Uh, that's about the uh, French Resistance during the Second World War. Um, so we're going to uh, go over and say hi to him, hi to, hi to them. Feel free to hang on if you so desire and uh, say hi to them with us. Uh, that again will be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and uh, we'll see you all of a sudden. Farewell. <laughs>